So if we're looking for xylitol products, what should we be looking for? I'd say the most effective xylitol products are the ones that uh, are going to do our teeth the most good. Uh, you can put xylitol in just about anything that you'd use sugar in, but for our teeth, we're thinking about the most effect we can get because xylitol is relatively much more expensive than sugar. So let's concentrate on oral care products that are used regularly. Toothpaste, mouthwash, breath spray, or, or a, uh, dry mouth spray. Uh, confections that encourage chewing or sucking, especially chewing gum, with the biggest application worldwide. Uh, hard candy and mints are also very important in places, especially where you can't chew gum. Food labels, look for xylitol first. That's a slogan that the United States Army came up with that is a very, uh, very good idea. Always look for xylitol as the, the first sweetener or preferably the only sweetener on the product label. If a product, uh, xylitol is sweet enough, you don't need to add anything else to make a product sweet. If it has enough xylitol, uh, xylitol should be right up there. Uh, first sweetener on the label. This one has water, uh, water first and then xylitol. Uh, here's some other chewing gums, popular sugar-free chewing gums that uh, some even, th this one on top has no xylitol at all. This one even says that it's less than 2% xylitol in the chewing gum. Uh, this one lists xylitol after gum base and before natural flavorings. Flavors are generally added about 1% in the product. Uh, xylitol might be down in that range. We don't know how much xylitol is in that particular product, but it's, you, you know it's not very much if they don't feature it right at the top of the label. Popular breath mint on the market. Everyone's familiar with this one. Uh, look at the first ingredients, sugar, maltodextrin, starch. Not much different than a sour candy. Uh, these are terrible. I, I usually go to the uh, candy show in Chicago every every year or two just to see what's, what's new and the latest trends they had are these super sour candies. I can't think of anything that would be worse for your teeth than to have a hard candy that has ingredients like sugar, corn syrup, even the uh, fructose from uh, fruit juice. What's invert sugar? Invert sugar is just your uh, um, sucrose molecule, you, uh, once it's broken down it's called invert sugar, uh, glucose and fructose. Acids, uh, there, there, there couldn't possibly be a product worse for your teeth than sucking on these super sour hard candies all day. But fortunately we have protective factors also and xylitol is right up there uh, by itself and it also enhances the other protective factors. I like to stretch the metaphor as far as I can so I picture our teeth being under assault at all times. Just from our normal foods that we eat, normal carbohydrates in our diet are always smoldering down there. But then all we have to do is throw some sucrose sugar on that mix, especially between meals, and you get this acid flare up. And maybe if you look extremely closely, you can actually see a little cavity starting to form there already. <laughs> Zyatol is promoting all the protective factors stimulates saliva, increases pH, promotes remineralization, suppresses the acidogenic bacteria, the acid germs that I call them, such as the strep butans. Xylitol is sort of like throwing a, a wet blanket over the, that smoldering mess. <laughs> stop the acid germs, stop the acid attacks, stop tooth decay with the help of xylitol. How much, how often? Well, the only a honest answer is it depends. And I think this is another good thing about xylitol is it's individually adjustable. It's really the best in, in self-care. Um, a, a motivated uh, person can, can use xylitol to their own benefit in the best way. But I think a reasonable range is between four grams, one teaspoon, again, one sugar cube, and 12 grams of a tablespoon. That's not a lot of xylitol. If you, that's just not a lot compared to what's in the rocket fuel over here. Just small amounts of xylitol used in divided amounts during the day. Use at least three times each day. I prefer to say five times each day. One teaspoon, one tablespoon. Uh, by the way, one packet here, four grams. That's a day's supply. If you divide it out, use it the right way, preferably after meals. I think frequency is more important than total amount. You could use a pound of xylitol in a quart of lemonade, drink it all down at one moment, and it's not going to do your teeth a lot of good compared to using this small amount, let's say, in chewing gum after each meal and snack. So uh, aim for five uses each day. 
Uh, start with toothpaste morning and night and you have two uses right there. Uses a xylitol toothpaste. Here's a, a good way to look at it. You have these little chewing gum packets in your um, goodie bag also. This is um, what a gram and a half per package. Okay so four of those gum packages and using uh, just use after meals and snacks. Use the uh, toothpaste um, morning and night and you're pretty well covered. If you're a high risk, if you have tooth decay, active tooth decay, uh, you might want to add some extra xylitol throughout the day. I would say the high risk patients, I, I would recommend at least six grams a day, possibly a little bit more than that. But still in that, in that range, between one teaspoon and one tablespoonful, by the way, that's about how much xylitol is generated by our own metabolisms in the course of a day. So it, it's very uh, interesting range to think about. Uh, using xylitol plaque becomes less uh, acidic, less irritating soft tissue, less inflammatory, less adhesive, and less harmful. Here's some dramatic uh, results, really, just with, uh, uh, from our uh, intake exam. We don't do the cleaning right away. We give instructions and, and get the patient on xylitol, and just after a week having them back in for a cleaning, they're already clean. The, the, they don't have that uh, massive sugar plaque buildup. It's the uh, people who really use these sugar products frequently that you see this heavy plaque buildup. And they might not be even aware that they're using that much sugar. They might be just using granola bars and, and uh, you know, rocket fuel and think that they're not getting that much sugar. But it really does, uh, their number of exposures is extremely high to the sugar.